All right, so I set the uh, windscreen on top of the fore deck just to get an eyeball look at it and what I'm in for. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, obviously we know about the, the big dip on this side of the boat. You know, I knew that was going to be there at the moment. Um, so the instructions say to, you got a mark on the inside where they, they basically permanent markered it. Um, you know, transfer that mark to this side. So, you know, that's your center mark. And then you're supposed to measure out to center of the deck. Um, as far as the forward, you know, the, the front to back position, from what I can tell in the instructions, you know, these, um, these marks over here, um, or to line up with the hole joints. So basically, you know, it's, it's in position where it's um, supposed to be. So just looking at it, you know, obviously my deck, you know, I'm starting out with, with um, an issue there, you know, because it's, it's drooped. And actually, you know, looking it over with a little better eye, this, this side over here is, is caved in pretty good. A big dip, big hole over here. But from, from here on the hood, back on that side is still lower than the edges. So I believe that pressure pulling like this, is just, the whole thing is doing this, it's just this side's worst. So I don't, it's not a flat deck. I don't know if it's supposed to be, you know, but you know, what I'm looking at now is, is making this windscreen conform to it. Now, today, I was trying to figure out how to deal with that, that corner over there. Um, you know, with this overbent side um, to try and bring that corner up. And, you know, obviously without pulling the panel and rebending it or whatever, um, I figured I'm probably just going to you know, uh, weld, weld the chines, Oop. you know, weld up the chine to the, to the hole and the, uh, the side panel where I'm going to be jacking. And, um, probably on the outside as well. Just, just weld it good. You know, I've contemplating, I got a bunch of this, uh, two inch, you know, roughly 10 foot pieces of uh, steel. I've got, I got more, I got cut, like two more pieces. And I thought, well, I could just go ahead and build a stand. You know, I bought some eight inch casters. Um, at least that way I'd be able to roll the boat in and out. But, you know, I could, I could set it on the, the boat on it, you know, for working on it and be able to transport it. And also, um, you know, I'd, I'd have to put two sets of rails. So when I flip it over, um, I'd have another set of rails to put it on. Or possibly, you know, when I flip it over, I'd do a left, I'd do a left to right. Um, I'm kind of thinking now, you know, it would have been nice to just build that stand from the beginning. Um, just figure out the dimensions, build the stand in preparation for building the boat. Um, and what that would do is that, you know, at the first stages, if you built your stand, you know, level left to right and all that, and you know, on your reasonably level floor, um, you know, when you get your outer hole plates tacked onto your keel, you can actually stand back knowing that the, the things are square on your stand that the, that the hole is sitting on, you know, and get your measurements to the floor you know, get your measurements um, left to right, all that stuff to determine whether your, your hole's square or not. And you, you can check that through the whole build. Um, you know, they say you can just block it up and, you know, I'm sure if, if all the parts are bent right and your angles are good and, and, they're, and they match and they're equal left to right, you probably don't need to do that, you know. Um, for this build, it would have been a big advantage from the beginning. Um, it might, might have figured some things out with a little more detail rather than just trusting the geometry. 
So, you know, and I've, I've wasted tons of hours just figuring things out, trying to figure out what's wrong, coming to realizations, trying to figure out how to fix them. You know, and anybody that wants to say, you know, bad bends or, or you know, a little overbent here, a little overbent there, or whatever it is, underbent, overbent, not that big a deal. Well, you know, get a kit like this one and put, put it together and see how much time you put into fixing things, especially as a novice, you know, or a beginner boat builder. You know, I'm not a beginner metal worker. So, you know, I'm not a pro, but I'm not a beginner. You know, I built, I built stands for equipment that sits on, you know, pitched roofs and, you know, HVAC equipment, and the whole works. You know, I can put things together. I can make it look good. I can be, make it structurally sound. You know, I'm primarily dealing with square, not curved components. You know, I'm not a sheet metal guy, but anyway. Um, so now with this windscreen, I don't know if you can see um, now with the shades on it, I think it was better when the sun was on it. Um, this corner here is a tighter bend than that corner. Um, so, so this edge sits up more than that, even though this is dropped down, you know, that makes it look right now a lot wider. But the instructions say, you know, to pull it down, I assume, you know, line up your center marks, you know, tack it from the center and work your way out. Um, and as you're, you're working out, you know, your line here is supposed to line up with your join from the, you know, at the fore deck to the, the hole, to the hole join right here. Um, so, you know, I'm pulling it up and I've got this exaggerated bend here. I mean, you know, if, if this deck was level, it, it, it wouldn't, still wouldn't have that gap. So I'm like, well, I don't know if, if that bend is just, you know, it's obviously a tighter bend than that side, but you know, I assume, you know, you're tacking your way out. You've got this massive gap that you're just, you're just putting a bunch of pressure on it, trying to bring the metal down to the deck, you know, and tack as you go. But with my issue, with this already being dipped, I, I just don't know if I have to straighten that hood for this windscreen to, to work out very well at all. You know, if, if I have to level the hood, you know, I bought a, a Wattscraft US um, boat building kit today. Um, it's a hydraulic spreader. So, you know, down at uh, Harbor Freight had it. I thought, wow, if I had, had this from the beginning, when I was trying to figure out why my, where my twist was and I was trying to spread the, the front of the, um, the bottom of the boat, you know, I could have welded brackets in there and used that spreader to, to spread it. And, you know, then it would be easier to try and deal with twists and stuff. But anyway, so I got that now, like 140 bucks. It was the smaller one, 8,000 pound. I figured, yeah, it's aluminum. So the plan on that is just to, to firm up the bottom welds here, use that jack in this corner. Um, you know, just start jacking on the sucker, you know? I mean, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna bend the crap out of the chine. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna try and put the jack on top of the chine. I thought, well, if I had it on a stand, you know, theoretically, I don't know, it's just still gonna push it. So, um, you know, if I can take some of that out, I mean, maybe I can, I can make it pretty decent. I don't know, I just think the, the extreme left to right pressure right there is, it's not that that big dip's not going to go away, but um, you know. So then, that's kind of one of those things where, you know, I could still use my my Wasscraft um, hydraulic kit, put some bracing across the bottom of the hole underneath that dash, um, get some flat stock or I beam or you know something, um, and I wasn't even going to deal with the steering crap until. You know, I got to that point. Um, I didn't even decide which side of the boat to put it on. You know, it's like, well, it's, you know, it's got a long ways to go. This has been taking me months. So, um, 
So basically, as you know, I can get a spreader bar up in there, that hydraulic spreader kit, you know, put something along the bottom on the en engine bearers, you know, and, and push up in that corner, try and level it out, put some I-beam in there or something, or, or, or just some pretty thick flat stock, you know, maybe three-eighths, um, you know, and, and tack it in from the bottom side and just see if I can get that level. Uh, you know, the boat twist, I don't think that's big a deal for this windscreen. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the dipped and bowed hood, you know. And if it was bowed up, it'd probably be easier, but it's not, it's bowed down, you know. And, it, you know, my personal opinion is that the, uh, let me adjust the camera here. You know, these bends here are a little bit too tight, you know. Um, like I said, even if that was up, you know, a quarter inch, there's, there's a pretty big gap there. I don't know if it's supposed to be. I mean, it seems to me like you'd want this to be, you know, a little closer to that, to where you're not having to take out between here and here, you're not having to take, take out that, that bend, you know, because you're going to have to take it out which means you're just doing it by hand, I guess. You know, and this, this windscreen, I think, is 3 16 You know, it's not the eighth inch stuff. So, you know, I guess, it's, you know, it's doable. Might not be a big deal. I mean, maybe that overbend will help pull up my hood. You know, it's, it's a little bit of extra pressure there, if that's an overbend. I'm just assuming it is, because I can Stand back, look at it, and this one's more extreme bend than that one is. Um, so, anyway, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, but as far as bends on a boat kit, um, you know, it is a big deal. You know, if, if you recall from my, one of my last videos, you know, this is, this is bent high right here. So this has to stick down, stinking thing. So, so this piece is sticking down, which means you can't, you can't mate that to the inside corner, you know, and, and things like that, as you're working your way forward, that's, that's the kind of thing that keeps your, your, the tips of these metals from lining up right, you know, so. You know, and in instructions it says, you know, if they don't line up right, cut your tax and do it again. Well, yeah, but what if you have that? Okay, it's not going to happen. Well, that kind of stuff changes the geometry. It, it moves, you know, it moves things more in here or out there or whatever it may be. And I was also realizing, you know, this bend, this end of the bend is high. And this end of the bend is low. And that's why I have a quarter inch gap, you know? And when I said this is a trim and fill boat kit, that's what I'm talking about. You're just gonna end up trimming and filling everything. You know, you don't, <laughs> you know how much time that would save you to get a boat that's bent right? You know, I mean, not to mention the twisted hole from the keel bends. You know, if, if, you have, if you have the bends on your keel right, you have a square bottom, it comes together in the front like it's supposed to, your, your geometry for putting the front together and your, your side bends on these rails actually being right to where, you know, it lines up with the hood because that's where it's supposed to be and your hood's not, not caved in. I mean, come on, you know, this isn't just me bitching about little things, you know, <laughs> anybody wants to argue that it's just, no, sorry, dude. Um, bends are, are really important in a boat kit, you know, anybody that says otherwise, is just like, I just now ah, you're full of crap or you don't get it. You've, you've either never done a bad bend kit kit. Um, 
or you've never done one of these boats, I don't know. But nobody's gonna tell me bends aren't that big a deal. A little off, a little there. A little here, a little there. You know, precision bends mean an easy um, hole assembly. That's what it means. I would have had this done months ago. You know, long time ago. I, I got the kit in February, the second one. And I had, I waited months just to find out where I could take my keel to try and get it bent right. And even then the front end, the front part of the keel didn't get corrected. It's like, you know, days off of work so I can get into the fab shop before they close, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, it's just all time and money, you know. In reality, if this, if this kit had gone together well, if I'd got the right parts bent right, um, you know, I'd, I'd be, I'd probably be on the water. You know, th this is the crap that takes a ton of time, you know, mounting an engine, you know, putting in the fuel tanks, all that stuff's basically just mechanical stuff, you know, just, okay, I'm going to make tabs. I'm going to put them here. I'm going to mount this here. I'm, you know, so on and so forth. That stuff's easy compared to this stuff. You know, even the electrical, oh, whoopee, I got to buy, you know, waterproof sealed connectors and extend the, the harnesses. It's, it's, you know, even the steering, I would love to be doing steering and figuring out how I'm going to make this stuff work because, you know, their steering kits aren't really set up for this particular jet ski model where everything's electronic versus cables. So, you know, right now, if you bought one, um, you know, 2016 Yamaha, you're going to be Okay, we're figuring out the steering wheel and the electric, you know, how the electrics are gonna be set up on, on the steering wheel, through the dash, all that. You know, they sell some steering parts I, I bought. I'm hoping I can use them, but at this point, you know, it, it's like, um, if I have to cut and reincorporate those, those handlebar controls into a steering wheel, you know, the steering wheel I bought is just, I mean, I might be able to use the hub, you know, and definitely where it goes through the dash, that all looks like good stuff. You know, get you through the dash, um, you know, mounts up nice, looks good. You know, machine parts. Um, Wattscraft, you know, I mean, RSR, they got some good parts you really w w do wanna buy. You know, um, the intake alone, it's just, how much time would that take you to figure out and fab up yourself and how good would that be? I mean, that's a component you wanna buy, you know, unless you just absolutely can't afford it, you know? Um, so, you know, I, I, bought a, I bought a steering cable from them, um, you know, a bunch of other stuff that I needed. I mean, there's still even more than I need. I don't have seats yet, you know? Um, I don't have, um, you know, like a, a sand trap. Don't have that yet. Um, you know, looking online last night, not much out there unless you're going through Wattscraft or out, out of the country, you know, for these types of boats. Um, there's a couple options, but, you know, and they're not cheap either, like 200 plus. And so, you know, but that stuff, man, I would love to be working on that stuff right now because that's, that's like the fun stuff compared to this. This is just, holy crap. Every time I start a new section of it, I'm just in for a fight. I'm in for delays. I'm in for, you know, figuring it out, ordering more metal, you know, and, and anything you add to the, the, the build, you know, like support metal across the bottom of your dash, in front of your dash to straighten out the hood. It's like, well, what's that gonna get in the way of, you know? when I get to all that other stuff, you know? I mean, maybe nothing, but, you know, you try and think ahead on these things so that you're not making the future harder for yourself. You know, you, you, do, you spend as much time doing something now, you know, and then you have to redo it later because you didn't account for something, you know? But anyway, it is what it is. Nothing really changed. I'll get that jack in there, start start tweaking on it. Um, 
And just, just to mention, I, I did cut the engine barrier supports and I, I cut welds up towards the front on the hull um, just to see if I had any movement or ability to move the hull. But with this deck on, even with this, these, uh, these side panels here, um, when I took that, that temporary brace out, I thought, well, I'll just loosen that up, you know, and uh, as I'm loosening the bolts, I'll see if, if there's any movement or any change, you know, and there was nothing. That thing would go exactly back where it went. And that was after cutting the two front engine bear straps that go off to the side on each side. And, and the engine bearers themselves, the tacks to the hull are, are cut. So <laughs> right now, there's, there's really not much forward hull um, bottom support, almost none, um, other than that bulkhead I put in. I mean, maybe if I took that out, because that's tacked the sides together, obviously that's gonna prevent twist, you know? <laughs> and I had to twist it to get it in square which I think ultimately was a good thing. I think it helped me on the top if I hadn't done that. Well, I know, because the first time I put the, the boat together, it was worse, way worse. All this stuff was, was big old gaps, you know, not coming together, just, you know, that improved severely when I put that, that bulkhead piece in, when I cut the bottom of the bulkhead and stuck it in there, you know, and if I had that, that boat building kit right there, um, when I'd done that, that would have been a, been a quick and easy deal. You know, I just put a couple brackets in there and spread it, you know. But anyway, you know, I'm, I'm learning. I, I, I'm not just wanting to get out there and, and, and bitch and complain. But man, if, if someone had put these videos out and I got a chance to watch them before I did this, you know how much time and money that would have saved me? I mean... <laughs> You know, I drove like 22 hours up to up to um, Idaho and back. And yes, the jet ski was already up there close to where RSR is, so I was already making that trip. But, you know, and they tried to accommodate me with a partially welded hole, blah, blah, blah. I'm just not going to go into that. But then I had to go back north of Portland to pick up the second kit, you know. And then this is what I got, you know. And fighting it for months, just trying to just take weeks to figure things out, try and figure out some solutions. Um, you know, that, these videos <laughs> have the potential of saving someone a whole lot of heartache and a whole lot of time and a whole lot of money. So, you know, I, I don't want to be ripping on companies. It's not my intention. I'm not you know, I'm not happy with RSR. You know, it's, this isn't Watchcraft's fault. You know, this isn't, this isn't their doing. You know, it's just their brand, you know? And I don't know what happened here. Maybe, maybe RSR's uh, Ben guys just, this is the one job they screwed up. And they just got everything all out of whack. You know, maybe the guy was stoned that day, you know, and, and had a few beers, I don't know. But, you know, this is indicative of, of the of the quality of, of bends that, that they that either RSR or their their bending guy puts out. Man, they gotta fire the dude, you know, or just go over and make sure he's sober when he's actually doing the job. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> holy cow! So you know, hopefully these videos help somebody. You know, I've got a lot of good information off of YouTube. It helped me and saved me time on a lot of other things. You know, and I'm not a video guy otherwise. So it's like, that's the reason I'm doing this because I kind of want to help give back to the YouTube community and, and in the jet boat area of things. It's like, you know, RSR puts out videos. They're 40 seconds long. Just showing their boats. You know, it's like, Watchcraft doesn't have a bunch of videos out there you know, given, given advice to people they're selling kits to. I mean, you know, they're not limiting their kits to, to professional boat builders either. You know, so what, what, who do they think are building their boats? You know, 
it's me. You know, the, the guy that's never done it before. So anyway, you know, I, I, I'm not happy with RSR, I'm, you know, but I, I can't say don't buy anything from them. Because if you, if you live in the U.S., you know, there's other boat builders, but they're not really selling kits. And the ones that you can get kits from, they're like 10-foot boats. This option is, I, don't, I can't find it out there. Unless, you want to, unless I was buying a completed boat for $37,000. You know, it's like, so RSR is your option. You know, and I, I just kind of hope, you know, Wattscraft or their customers are going to help them get it right. You know, but, and I was real tentative in the beginning to say anything. You know, if, if you notice, I, I was, I kind of went after Wattscraft because I, I wanted them to hold RSR accountable. But eventually I started bringing RSR into it because the more I was sure that this would, these were Ben problems, the more I was willing to actually mention their name, you know, and I have ignored their calls. I've said that before. So you know, they may be willing to go to the end of the earth to help me, but that every time that happens, it, it takes away months of my time. So I'm just going to build the damn thing. You know, sorry for my cussing, but you know, I hope they do better in the future. I hope other people can get kits that, that go together. Well, you know, hopefully not everybody's having to deal with this. You know, maybe they do. I don't know. I, I can't, you know, go online, try and find reviews. Go online, try and find videos of people building a Wattscraft boat from RSR. They're non-existent. So I guess I'm the guy that gets to make the videos that people can go to, you know. And it really sucks for RSR. Um, possibly even Wattscraft too, but, you know. <laughs> They're all over the place, you know, as far as where they sell their boats, you know. I don't know how big the U.S. is as far as the market's concerned, you know. But anyway, just continue on. Do a video later.